Done. I've had to put my plane down to carry out some emergency repairs. Storms and this undergrowth haven't helped matters either. There. I've had enough for one day. In a cave below here, I've managed to establish a base. I've spent the last few weeks unloading equipment and supplies. That kettle must be nearly boiling now. I need to put my feet up and have a nice... Oh, get on to the science line first. What's going on out there? Stella, we've got a question for you. Yeah, we're shattered. We've run out of energy. That's because we've been playing football, so we've used up all our energy. Yeah, but where's it gone? It's like when a battery runs out. It's all been used up. But it must have gone somewhere. What is energy, Stella? I'm on to it. Energy is something you can't see, like the wind. But you can see and feel its effects everywhere. Now, energy allows my body to walk, talk, see, and do things. A bit too much at the moment. I'm ready for that cup of tea. Only take a minute. This kettle needs energy to boil the water. And it's energy that makes this radio work. Or it will when I wind it up. I'm not creating the energy. I'm transferring it from my muscles to the spring, where it's stored until it's needed. Energy transfers are responsible for just about everything in the universe. And they're not difficult to spot. The energy that was stored in the wood is being released by burning and gives off heat and light, and if you listen, sound as well. No signal in here. Try it outside. Another energy transfer. But where did the energy come from for my muscles? It's been through quite a few transfers to get to me. The energy was transferred to me through my breakfast. The energy was stored in this food. When I ate it, some of it went into keeping me alive and warm. The rest was stored for when I needed it. But where did the plants get their energy from? The sun is the main source of energy used on Earth. Now, plants capture their energy from the sun by photosynthesis, which involves green plants turning light, carbon dioxide and water into food, which is their stored energy. So all along the way from the sun to me, energy is being stored and released. Now, food is an energy store, and any stored energy is called potential energy. So, when the energy from food is released, I can use it. I can move my muscles. And when I turn the handle, the potential energy from my muscles is transferred and stored in the spring. And when I release the spring, the energy is transferred into electricity and the radio will work. Now, it produces sound and some heat is generated as well. And that's why the radio feels warm. No, no still nothing. It's not really surprising. I'm nowhere near any radio stations. No wonder. I've got an idea. Now, energy can't be created, neither can it be destroyed, only transferred. Which is something that Howie is keen to investigate. Nine p.m. The streets were meaner than a Rottweiler with a migraine. I had a hunch energy was being lost in this town, and I was investigating where it was going. For I am the energy detective. I'd had a tip-off I should watch out for Debs McGrail. Said she had useful information I might find useful. Suddenly I saw her. Debs McGrail? 
I've been expecting you. I've heard that there's energy being lost, and nobody loses energy in my town. You've got it all wrong. Listen, lady, don't play the fool with me. Losing energy is a crime. And besides, it's wasteful. But you can't lose energy. When you use it, it just gets transferred. Don't you understand? You're asking if I, the great energy detective, don't understand? Actually, I, I don't. <laughs> Take your car. The energy comes from the petrol in it. What do you want is for that energy to be transferred into movement or kinetic energy. Sure. But only 30% is transferred into movement. 30%? That means I'm losing... Uh, a lot. But that's the point. It's not lost. It's just transferred. What to? Mainly heat. Parts of the car heat up. Engine, tyres, and they heat the air and road around them. The exhaust pipe heats up too, and that heats the air. Then there's sound. That's energy being transferred to particles of air, which vibrate and carry the sound to you. Wow. But here's the main point. If you add up all that the energy is transferred into, it's the same as the energy that was put in. Nothing is lost. It was all too much. I felt in need of a science in action graphic. I got it. If the total available energy is 100%, the useful energy is what goes into movement, 30%. The rest is energy that gets transferred into things that ain't so useful. So nothing is lost, just changed. I was beginning to understand. But surely there's a principle at stake. You can't create or destroy energy. It just gets transferred. It's called the principle of the conservation of energy. It's not lost or destroyed. See, there was a principle at stake. So, only 30% useful energy for my car. That's not very good, is it? And as for that torch... Not my torch! The energy in the batteries is transferred into useful light and useless heat. I prayed she wouldn't tell me what the useful energy was. Useful energy, 5%. She told me. We said our goodbyes and I went back into the night. Now I knew of all the energy and all the towns in all the world, none of it was ever lost. Oh, it's no good. Must eat to keep my energy up. Stella, you know you said food is where we get our energy from. Well, look at this. These foods have energy values written on the sides. Yeah, look. 1,600 kJ per 100 grams. What's that mean, Stella? Or this. Or this. Does all energy have a value? Yes, it does. And kJ stands for kilojoules, which is a 1,000 joules. And a joule is the unit that energy is measured in. Look at this. Now, what fuel do you think I should use to heat this test tube of water? Gas? Coal? No? How about a peanut? Our body burns food like fuel to give us energy. Other fuels also have an energy value. This kilogram of peanuts has the same amount of energy stored in it as 750 grams of charcoal, or 1.3 kilograms of paper, or 650 grams of petrol. Different foods give different amounts of energy, sometimes a surprising amount. This sponge finger is being soaked in liquid oxygen. By burning the food in oxygen, the energy is released. It's the same with all foods. Take these, there are 100 grams of each here. So which food stores the most energy? Tomato, 75 kilojoules. Sugar, 1,600 kilojoules. Butter, 3,000 kilojoules, the winner. Now, how many kilojoules do you think you need a day to live? A thousand? Two thousand? Well, on average, it's nearer ten thousand. How much food is that? I think this is something Howie will enjoy investigating. This is the life, eh? The great outdoors, and I haven't got a care in the world. But I tell you, all this fresh air really does give me an appetite. So, it's a good job I've brought a packed lunch with me. Some crisps, 
Hmm, this should keep me going for a while. Well, certainly till tea time. You're looking at around 4,160 kilojoules of energy here. That's around a third of my daily intake. But imagine you were going somewhere where there were no shops and you had to carry enough food, not for one day, but for one whole week. That's how much I eat in a week. Well, my investigation is to meet a man who has carried his own food, not for seven days, but for a hundred, to the North Pole. Dave. Hi, Harry. What's happened? Are you taking up canoeing? No, this is a sledge. I'm just making sure it's waterproof. Oh, right. Is this the sledge you took to the Arctic? That's right. It's very small. How did you fit everything in? Well, you've got to be really careful and, and take with you only what you need. Dave's journey lasted 100 days, and he took 100 kilograms of food, the same weight as this charcoal. So you took 100 kilograms of food for 100 days. That's one kilogram a day. That's right. Normally, a man like me needs 12,000 kilojoules a day. But we worked out, pulling a sledge like this in the Arctic Ocean, we'd need 27,000 kilojoules a day. So in each kilogram, you had to cram 27,000 kilojoules of energy. Well, let's see how my lunch compares. Dave needed 27,000 kilojoules per kilo. My lunch works out at only 8,000 kilojoules per kilo. That's because the foods you have here for the weight are a mixture of high and low energy foods. We worked out that we need to take food that for their weight was packed with energy. So what did you take? That's for you to find out. You better go and investigate. Hmm. Sounds like a challenge. Right. I need to find food that averages around 2,700 kilojoules per 100 grams. How does this meat pie do? 673 kilojoules per 100 grams. Mm. Not good enough. Fresh stuff would go off. Better. Oh, mint cake. Nice present for Stella. And what about this? Thank you. And the high energy results are... Rice, 1,600 kilojoules per 100 grams. White chocolate, 2,400 kilojoules. Macadamia nuts, 3,200 kilojoules. But what's this at 3,730 kilojoules? Suet. Hi, Dave, look, I've got it. The most high energy food in the shop. Unfortunately, it's vegetable suet. It's pure vegetable fat. That's right, that's exactly what we took. Here's a one kilogram bag we brought back with us containing dried meat with suet, soup with suet, cereal with suet, chocolate powder. With suet? No. Oh. But here's the star, suet bars containing peanut butter, macadamia nuts and... Suet. You've got it. Don't fancy that suet bar, but I'm enjoying this mint cake I bought for Stella. Don't tell her. This is the radio from the plane. I've built a machine to try and make it work. Now, what energy transfers are going on here? The bucket fills with water. High up, it has potential energy. When it's heavy enough, it starts to fall. As it comes down, the potential energy transfers to movement or kinetic energy in the wheel. As the wheel turns, kinetic energy is transferred to this dynamo. It also produces sound and a bit of heat, too. The dynamo transfers kinetic energy into electricity. And the radio transfers the electricity to sound and some heat. So the whole system is mainly a transfer of potential energy and kinetic energy. Now, only 6% of the potential energy the bucket had is going to the radio. So it's not very efficient, but it's very useful. Now, it's obviously good to have things as energy efficient as possible. So I'll leave Howie to investigate, and I'll see if I can pick anything up on the radio. I'm in a place where they've made energy use more efficient, which is good, because they use a lot of it. I'm going to start my investigation by finding out what energy they use and how. Oh. Oh. Here's the first thing. Good. They have to heat water. There's something else. 
Something's pushing this water around. I reckon it's a pump. That'll need electricity. Hang on. Warm air. Need energy to heat that. But it must be moved around with fans. Told you. Oh, oh, um, oh, uh, oh, oh, lights. Then there's all the hot water they use in the rest of the building. Howie, we also use electricity for the office and for security and for general running. Come on. I reckon you use energy for all these things. That's right. We used to use gas boilers for the heating and electricity from the mains. So that came from a power station? Yes. Both the power station and our boilers use gas. This mat represents the total gas used by both. And these floats represent how the energy is used. Now, I know that of all the energy that goes into something, 100% gets transferred. Some of it's useful, some of it's wasted. Right, so this is the actual work you had done in the pool, and this is the total gas energy you had to use to, to do it. I mean, is all this wasted? Yes, that's right. Energy is wasted in the way it's transferred. Take a power station. A lot of the heat goes out of the cooling tower to steam. So what I need to do is make these somehow take up more of the square. But if I make these bigger, the whole thing will get bigger. I'll put you out of your misery. We brought the power station to us. We now use less gas to get the energy we need. Come on, I'll show you. A power station in a swimming pool. Now this, I've got to see. This is our new system. It's a gas engine that generates electricity. But what about heat? That's the clever bit. How is energy usually wasted? Of course, as heat. So are you capturing that somehow? Yes, we take the heat in the exhaust gases to heat our centre. So in the old systems, the useful and useless energies were 50% each. Now, because the centre uses less gas to make the same amount of useful energy, the system's more efficient. In fact, the efficiency now is... This much! <laughs> Haven't received any messages yet, but now I've rigged this up, I can leave it on, just in case. Now, here's one for you. A cup of tea. And a cup of ice. Now, which one took the most energy to make? Depends on the water temperature to start with. Say it was 20 degrees. To boil water, you need to heat it to 100 degrees. That's 80 degrees. To make ice, you'd have to get it down to zero degrees. That's 20 degrees. It would still be water at not degrees. Wouldn't you have to take out lots more energy to turn it into ice? 